guess what? We got a great giveaway for you today. This one's amazing. Here's what you win if you leave a comment in the first 24 hours and we pick your comment in today's podcast. You get one of these guys. It's a dynamometer. Dynamometer? Did I say that right, Doug? Dynamometer. Dynamometer. There you go. So this thing tests your grip strength. In fact, when you listen to this episode, we'll tell you some pretty awesome ways to use this. So we'll mail this to your door if you win. By the way, turn on your notifications, subscribe to this channel so you know when we post these episodes and you can enter to win all kinds of cool free stuff. One more thing before we start the podcast. We've got a huge sale going on right now, helping people get ready for summer. MAPS Anabolic, 50% off, and the Shredded Summer Bundle is 50% off. The Shredded Summer Bundle includes MAPS Aesthetic, MAPS Prime, MAPS It, and the Intuitive Nutrition Guide. So all those, 50% off. Head over to mapsfitnessproducts.com and then use the code April Special with no space for the discount. All right, enjoy the podcast. You guys look very nice. Are these? Thank you. You're, you're handsome yeah. as well. Here's there. what I want to know. Why does it take so long to cut your hair? It's just bzz, done. <laughs> I don't understand that. <laughs> it's, it, it's the beard. Yeah. So Because I saw her spend a lot of time on your head, too. It's yeah. Like, it's I don't like understand that. Uh, it's like one head at a time? No, yeah. It's, it's, no, uh, no, no, no. The real question is, like, which one of us took our shirt off? <laughs> Yeah, this guy. That's the question. Hold, I have a shirt under the <laughs> shirt, though. I just have all these muscles. Hey, hey, I need hey, him to hey, breathe. Hey, hey, you know? hey, hey this is a shirt, you. too. Hey, There's two shirts. Hey, hey. <laughs> so we have we have a barber uh, in shop now, right? So that's the, that's the new thing. And uh, I go first. I get my haircut. It takes a long time, right? Because it takes a lot of work to make this look like the way it does right mm -hmm. here. Uh, yeah, you think he just wakes up looking? Yeah, at yeah. this is a lot of work to be a lot of investment. Really time. Pay attention to hey, detail. A lot, for a lot of work left, to be right? a five. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So a lot of work. And then, uh, then Justin would next, and then Sal, and then Sal. Uh, any chance or excuse to take a shirt off? You know, like yeah, I don't want to get, <laughs> anyway. I don't want to get here. I'm, I don't want to get hair on my unicorn shirt. You know what I'm saying? No, so hey, you can't gotta do peel that. it down to hey, the white. I have two shirts on. <laughs> this is also a shirt. <laughs> you know what I mean? I like I went bare chested. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't like little it's hairs. Yeah. I don't like the hairs yeah. getting stuck in my collar. Did her heart stuff. flutter yeah, a little bit or anything? Huh? She she get a little nervous after you did that, or yeah, she started right. sweating a little. Yeah, she was like, whoa. I know what I'm working with today. Oh, you're the buff guy the yeah, yeah. Is, yeah, totally. <laughs> oh, oh now i can see why you're into fitness yeah no 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 i don't like the hairs dude when i get little hairs in here yeah. oh my yeah, god i, I want to yeah. punch someone in the face you so. gotta take a shower yeah, yeah. so i feel and i'm, I'm good dude yeah, yeah. Good. You're making good. fun of my unicorn shirt yeah. my daughter got me this dude that's great i promised her i'd wear it on the podcast a couple times so i know now I know. whenever i wear it i send her the youtube and she gets all excited speaking of t-shirts did you order michaela peterson's t-shirt i yet? did you did yeah i did Oh, so good. Smart. Did she? She made a T-shirt of him being Red Skull. Bro, yeah, her dad. You so had to break down the video. So. This is a. This is insane. So, and I did, thought it was. I'm like, get out of here. Did you pull up his quote by chance? I asked you to do. That. I didn't pull up his ah, quote. I wanted you to pull that. Yeah, up. but I did. Maybe Doug can get. To I it. did. I mean, did you see the whole? Okay, so here's what happened for people that yeah, know. Yeah, break it down. So Marvel uh, Comics, they put out a new uh, another Captain America comic. Red Skull is one of his arch nemesis. If people don't know. The Red Skull literally was like a super villain Nazi. And he was I don't like mean, a magical Nazi villain. I don't mean I don't mean figuratively. I mean literally he was a Nazi. In fact, the original American uh, uh, what's his name uh, Captain America comics were during that time, and he was fight Nazis. That was the original comic books way back in the day. I used to love Captain right. America. Anyway, Red Skull was this Nazi guy. So this new one comes out, and Red Skull literally has ten rules for life <laughs> in the comic book. And a good chunk of them are like right off of Jordan Peterson's Ten Rules for Life, yeah. right? And it's, it's it was deliberate. I mean, the more you look into it, like the more things you could totally like correlate between what he's put out and what they. I I don't get it. Like he's he's done. He spent his entire career talking about the terrible, uh, you it, know, it how terrible totalitarianism is, is how bad uh, Nazism is and communism is. I mean, it's all he talks about and. He's and, been called a Nazi before, which is ridiculous. But this it. is like a whole other level, right? They I made know. him an actual like f fantasy character. Now, do you do you subscribe to this being political propaganda? I yeah. mean, is that the move here? Yeah, I think one of two. Yeah, what my, else could it be? My theory is one of two things. One is the guy person who wrote it knows he'll sell a bunch mm. by doing that, right? Uh, so because yeah, you know causes so an online that's true. that yeah. that could be true. Think about oh, how man, many people are buying it just for that. Yeah. No, that's a good point. Yeah. Well, so you, now you have to share because I watched the clip. Uh, Michaela Peterson came out. She did a whole little like YouTube clip on on this this whole thing, right? And she even says that you know at first I just thought it was people making a big deal and like you know everyone always tries to draw make connections to something and and mm -hmm. she's like 
oh no, this is blatant. Yeah, very it's blatant. Obvious. It's my dad. So <clears throat> it, I love, absolutely love how they're handling this. Mm -hmm. So what they, what she's decided to do, and she's came out and said that anytime this happens, so if you're going to continue to slander my father. Straighten up what you can straighten up. Organize your local landscape. Schedule your time. Start taking control of yourself. Clean up your room. You don't have to. You don't have to do any of this. That's okay. Then how come you're running? Instead of us getting up in arms and making a big deal about it, what we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to make light of it and we're going to make merch yeah, out of it. profit off of it. And then we're going to sell, not just, we're not going to profit. What we're going to do is we're going to take 100% of the proceeds and we're going to give to a good cause. Oh, mm. that's even better. I I love that. And it was, and what they did with the shirt was, it was, you know, so Hydra is mm -hmm. like the, the, the group that Red Skull is part of or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So they took the Hydra emblem and they made it into like lobsters because, you know, there's that whole thing about how, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. And, uh, and, that's oh, the, that's and, great. and then that's the shirt. So I'm like, I got to support. I yeah. got to get that. So I'm going to have to rock. Very smart. I like that. I think that's such a smart strategy on media. If someone is messing with you, mm -hmm. just take it, spin it, and then point it in a good direction because it makes you makes it very hard to attack you. Did mm -hmm. you read did you find the quote Doug I was talking about? So on the YouTube video that she did, she, it's in the YouTube notes. I'll just absolutely butcher if I try and repeat Jordan Peterson. It's in the notes? Yeah, it's in if you go to the YouTube that she linked, I'll find it. She right at the very top or in the in the section it talks about a, a statement that her father always says about taking evil something evil and then turning like good deeds out of it, mm. except for obviously Peterson always uses uh, much bigger words than that. <laughs> um, but it's it's he speak big words. Yes, it's, it's very eloquent. So if you yeah. if you if you read it, uh, I wanted to read it. I want or I wanted you to read it <clears throat> because I thought that. Yeah, was Yeah, I'm gonna cool. find it right now. And see if I can pull up the. It's in the. Okay, let's see here. Um, no, the quote's not in the notes. It's oh yeah, it said out of ignorance, malevolence, oh, and go. slander, we will thereby derive some palat uh, palpable good. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Uh, isn't that great? Yeah, yeah, I think that's awesome. Yeah, what a cool way to put a spin on that too. Mm -hmm. It's an interesting time, right, with people attacking each other through media. And I guess the, the winner is always a smarter person, not always the angry person. I think sometimes you come across angry. Yeah, mm -hmm. it makes you look defensive or weak. I do agree with Justin's theory, though. I think that this could have been just a straight strategy to to sell more right for on their part before mm, yeah. peterson and got I'll take involved credit for that so yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, did Sal say, oh yeah, that was sorry, sorry. adam <laughs> never thinks it's no, my I, I, <laughs> I will it's definitely a, take credit yeah. yes yeah, <laughs> so. yeah. For the, it's on it's on tape rewind it what it did yeah uh, anyways did you guys have a good weekend I did. Oh, it was great. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Would you? You were you yeah. were up in the up in the yeah mountains, up right? in, yeah up in the mountains. You got the, the poles out too, huh? Did you go fly fishing? Yeah, I went fly fishing. Got the boys uh, out and and we we did some practice. Obviously, we didn't get much in terms of a nibble or any kind of uh, luck there, but that's okay. Like it, it's going to take multiple trips of us getting better and like practicing for him to get it. But they enjoyed it, which I was really stoked on. And then we went we went uh, for our last run. So it was like the last. I don't know if it was technically the last day, but it was one of the last days that. Uh, the resorts were open and so we went and we were able to go uh, boarding one last time uh, we were sitting there and it was kind of funny I was uh, you know people watching it's a great place when mm -hmm. you're up there in the lodge and just sitting there and kind of chilling and uh, I, I noticed this this group of, of ladies that were like you know over 40s whatever sort of cougar kind of uh, category if mm -hmm. you will uh, and these guys had, had walked up to them all like you know hey ladies you know like doing their their pitch and whatever and so they're kind of giggling and whatnot. And I'm just, you know, slightly paying attention because I got nothing better to do. And uh, they, they start talking and flirting and this and that. And then they, he, the, the guys give her his number. They leave or whatever. Immediately they go on to Instagram and they're just roasting this guy between all, all four of them. They're just like, oh, look at this. And look at this picture. And like, uh, and I'm like, oh my God, this is a thing. Like, this is what people do now. Wow. I, I didn't even realize that. Uh, you know, when you give a number, it's like now you have like all the visuals and everything else that you can just like start scrolling through it and just, you know, if, if this person does this, like, oh, that's weird. Wait, you so did the guys think that they had, a, like, did the girls make it seem like the guys had a chance when they were talking to oh, them? Oh, totally. 
Oh, oh, they're 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 all like hee hee hee. This like, one's we'll hang you, out later, bro. We have men are no, we are no match for women. Like, no with that idea. Shit. No, that was no. my first like like insight. You were of, blown away watching from the yeah, side. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like these ladies are nasty. <laughs> How dare you? Well, this <laughs> seem like some nice guys. That's the game though. Yeah, right? that oh. reminds me. Remember when we had Enzo working for us, the you know, kid that was fresh out of high school, yeah. and he was talking about how like the way that you meet or start talking to somebody now, it's not. You wouldn't walk if you're at a party. I remember asking him this. He's like, if you're at a big party and you saw a girl across the room that you were interested in, and she's in the room. Yeah, she's in the room across the way at this big party. What do you do? And he's like, oh, well, you <clears throat> you get on her Facebook page and you request a friend request, and then only if she uh, accepts. You then comment to her, and if she responds, oh then you. That's so weird. I know. I but, thought that but was. But this is the gen- this is like our generation, or like you know, older than us even. Like this is how they're doing the, the single thing. Well, yeah. I mean, besides that, it's, it's just, uh, to me, what that highlights is again, we're no match. Like the dudes probably, th- yeah. I guarantee you, because I know this, this is what guys do. They probably <laughs> left, and their conversation probably sounded like this. Okay, dude, she pro- she totally wants to bang me. Or you know what I mean? And the women are like, look at his, yeah, look at this, look at him in a swimsuit, right. or look how what an idiot he is. Or that that girl's trying to be all you know, ha ha ha, like this that, and then she calls him later that night mm, when right. her friends don't know. You think so? <laughs> Guaranteed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when they all go home. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Do you want another drink? Nah, I'm gonna go bang. So I was gonna such a loser. Hey, what are you doing? Yeah. So I wonder how many times that happens, and you, you know, guy or girl, right? Then you go and you look the person up and they look like nothing like the person you just met. Mm. Like because so many people Photoshop Doctor and use filters and, they, and it's the best of everything is on Instagram and stuff. Like how many times does someone go meet somebody and then get their information and then go look up on their social media and like, oh my God, this person is yeah. like super hot on Instagram. But- well, especially if you're wearing a bunch of ski clothes. Yeah. yeah. Like you don't get any kind of real semblance of like yeah. what their body, what you're working with. So right. I can see on I Instagram. It. It looks yeah. Totally I don't know how I would, I would serve. I don't know if i'd like it the way it is now like you know I, the old way is you just you shoot a spitball at her or something in the room and get her attention the old-fashioned <laughs> lighter hair on fire yeah you know what yeah. I mean? that was my good something like that yeah. spill a drink oh excuse me uh, hey what's going on you know? punch her in the arm yeah hey, that's, so that's I, like you i got it i got a random dm uh, actually got a couple from that episode that we did remember when we i brought up the whole burger den thing right yes so somebody was literally okay listening to our show and doing their DoorDash you know, driving around and had just picked up from Denny's and he was messaging me saying like, Oh my God, this was it's, he says it's all branded. So you go to Denny's, you pick it up, but you pick up a, a burger den bag and everything. And it has no resemblance of Denny's when you go there. Wow. So this makes me, I wonder how many companies are doing this. Why not? I if, know if DoorDash is exploding and everybody's yeah. ordering food to their door, that's brilliant, if you ask me. Totally. Because now you can have a kitchen. Actually, if you it have a gives restaurant, them a fresh new start, bro. If you if you have a restaurant, you have a kitchen, so you could be like, hey, you want to start a Chinese restaurant? Dude, no. <laughs> you could you exactly. You could literally be a burger den. You could be a taco place, and all of it can be coming from Denny's. But you can brand it four different ways, and and sell to now. More- now here's a deal wow. because part of me is like, oh, you you know tricksters. But then the other part of me is like, you know what? If they're good, they'll do well. If they're not, they're, they're, I'm they're not, just No, I'm not against this. Yeah, because if you order a burger from there, even if I could say whatever, what is a burger, Dan, it could say whatever. If I eat it and it's gross and enough people do that, it's going to get a bad rating. No one's going to want to Yeah, wanna go. no, I, I think it's smart I found and a, fair. I found a place on uh, DoorDash by my house that I've driven by many times. I don't want to say the name because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say good things, but also bad things. I used to drive by all the time and they didn't look good. The, the, it just the outside didn't look good. I was like, it's not going to be good. Mm-hmm. I saw them on DoorDash, didn't connect it to. I just saw the name, mm-hmm. and I ordered from them. Amazing food, mm-hmm. amazing food, and that is a, an example of a, of a place that was because of DoorDash. I tried and loved, and if there was just brick and mortar, I would have never given them a second. Uh, I wouldn't even looked at them because. The, uh, the way the, the building looked and everything didn't look like Oh, yeah. Associations are so powerful. There was a barbecue place like that. Like, it got new ownership, but I was just so turned off by my last experience. I, I, I went there. Like, I would never go there otherwise. But if I was to see it in a different branding and, you know, they delivered it to me, I tried it and then found out where it was from, I'd be like, whoa, okay, I'll give it another shot. Speaking yeah. of barbecue stuff, do you guys, I notice, like, how fast I go through my butcher box now that this, like, we're into spring now. Are you guys the same way? Like, when I was over the winter, time the i have a meat freezer right so and we have everything on auto so the butcher box mm-hmm. gets sent do you get the month. biggest box uh yeah i think it's mm-hmm. the biggest yeah, box yeah, I I katrina do. is the one that has it organized i think it is the biggest box 
and in the winter time, I find that the we start to kind of fill the freezer up. Like mm-hmm. it's like, oh, I'll get around to cooking that, or I don't feel. Like, but our, right away, springtime hits, the nice weather and stuff like that. I'm out grilling so much, and so I go through I, the meat I way use, faster. I right? get the biggest Crazy. box and have add-ons, and I still I use it up because I yeah. just I, I use it. I have it. I use it. I love it. I get a, and I now I'm to the point where it's mostly tri tips. Flank steak and uh, ribeyes. Those yeah. are the ones that I eat the most. And then I'll have the pork chops. And that's yeah, I do it. all the steaks, chickens and all that now and the Traeger and then uh, burgers and all that kind of stuff I'll still do on the grill. And sometimes I'll do it simultaneous, you know, so I'm like cooking it all because I'm trying to do it Sundays and we're trying to do more of a prep where we're, we're yeah, cooking I, a lot of the meat ahead gotta, of time. I got to do that. Yeah, I just started that. So that's it, I, every time I've done that before, it's helped tremendously. I, it's like, you know, I'm not doing that right now. And when I do, my diet is always way of better. Of course. Always yeah. way better. Of course. Yeah. And you save money. Yeah. It's way better. Yeah, you we don't know who is it? Because we just, where were we just at when I was, uh, I wanted us, oh, when we went up to Truckee last and I, I wanted us to do chicken, barbecue chicken instead. Mm-hmm. Do you guys not eat chicken as much? I eat a lot of chicken. I eat probably chicken the most. I stopped really? eating chicken because it just has this weird consistency. Like when we went to grill it, it was be kind of like chewy, grizzly kind of tasting. But once I started cooking on the Traeger, it's a totally different experience. Yeah, it's way better. I um, I do red meat most of the time. It's, yeah, I'd say I probably eat red meat every single day, and I'd say I probably eat chicken two or three times a week. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I, I love red meat. It just makes me feel the best, taste the best. Mm-hmm. If I do chicken, it's thighs. I don't I or I don't do breast too often although I, I did I did a little stint with breast because of the because it was so easy to get a lot of protein through breast. Yeah, I never eat breast anymore. It's like, dry. Yeah, it's just you know and it's you when you when you look at the the macros it's not that you're not like saving that many calories mm. and the thighs mm. Thighs you can cook the you can cook just like you're saying prepping on a Sunday and then I can reheat it 2 or 3 days later mm. and and because of all the fat it's still really good. You do chicken breast and then you reheat chicken breasts. Mm. Ugh, yeah. yeah, so oh, dry. I want to ask rough. you, Adam, because your your son, you know, he's he's still is he still breastfeeding? No, no, no more. Okay. No, once we hit the one, we hit one year at the one year mark, maybe about I don't know a month afterwards, she was okay. done. So when he was, because I did this with Aurelius, it's hilarious. I'll tell you a story. But uh, when he was breastfeeding, did you ever mess with him? Yeah. Like where he's on, like he's on the boob, yeah. and you go down and pretend like yeah. you're gonna take yeah. the boob away and yeah, do that. Yeah, yeah. What would he do? Yeah, no, he's he pushes his hand on my face. Yeah, dude, so he'll man. he'll push my hand like that, and he still is like this. That's like what, if, if I mess with him when he's eating or something like that, he gives me like the stiff arm. Oh yeah, I went in there and I was like, I pulled him off, like I was gonna take the milk from him. You know, he's like, eh, yes. hilarious. And then he does this thing where he's when he's breastfeeding, he'll take his face off and look at her nipple or whatever, and then he'll take his hand and he'll grab her poop <laughs> and he'll like squeeze. <laughs> <laughs> We're dying. <laughs> he's trying to get like, and then a little milk will come out. And then he'll do his thing. And then he'll move back. Like, and, and she's like, "Can you stop playing with my boobs?" What, you guys are on what month five now? Guy. Where are we at? Where are we? Yeah, at? we're uh, I think five and a half. Five and a half. Right five and a half months. Yeah. Okay. So how now? How are the nights right now? Or have you guys? Started? He was doing good, and then he did a little bit of a, a regression uh, where okay. there was some challenges. Yeah, yeah. So, but he seems to go be going back. But we had to do the whole all this morning. In fact, Jessica had this is the first time it's happened. Or now this happened to me. This happens to every parent that I know of, where you know when you're doing the sleep training thing, you let your kid cry, <clears> and. <throat> One time, every parent's had this. At least one time, you let your kid cry. They don't stop crying. You let them cry. Let them cry. You go in there, and Find then you, they pooped a diaper. You realize there was some shit that happened, right? Yeah, yeah. And I remember the first time that happened to me with my oldest son, where he was screaming, crying, whatever. I'm like, nah, he'll go back to sleep. Went in there, was poop everywhere. I felt so terrible. I still feel bad about. It. Happened to Jessica this morning. Oh. She was letting him cry. Let him cry. And she goes in there, and then there was. And so I come, I come in from the garage, and the look on her face was like she was gonna cry, and she's holding him, and he's in his little towel because she gave him a bath, you know, and she's like, it was he pooped everywhere, you know, and I'm like, oh, <laughs> yeah. don't worry, baby. I mean, yeah. every now and then it happens, you know. You won't remember, dude. Yeah. Mine is going through this phase right now that I absolutely love, and I want to freeze time. I hope this lasts for a while, but so on the weekends. I'm there for his nap, right? So during the week, I'm not there for his nap time. Mm-hmm. Like when he goes, he naps like around noon or 11 or noon, somewhere, depending on how early he got up that morning. And so I'm during the week, I'm not around for nap time whatsoever. And Katrina always says that like, you know, sometimes it's really hard for the nanny to get him down because like he knows how to manipulate her. I've told you guys this before. He'll get down and want to play and then mm-hmm. she ends up skipping it. He or uses whatever. his cuteness. Yeah. So he totally knows how to, to manipulate her at, to get out of his nap. So I'm never around for nap time except for on the weekends. 
And so what our routine kind of looks like is Saturday Saturday morning he gets up and you know he kind of lays with us in bed around six thirty seven and is playing around. We watch a little bit of cartoons sometimes for about a half hour and then play in the in the morning time. And then around like eleven o'clock or so, I know that he's getting kind of tired. And I'll normally turn on uh, music and I turn it on like YouTube videos mm-hmm. or whatever. And as soon as I turn it on I, and I blare it like loud, like we're dancing and stuff like that. As soon as he sees me stand up, like I'm going to dance, he comes running over to me and he wants me to hold him and, and dance with him. And I'll dance with him and one song in and he'll start to nestle his head oh, like, yeah. into, into me. And the music I'm telling you is like full blast and he'll completely pass out. On me, like rock. Is like, that the video that you did? You yeah, posted. Yeah, that was this weekend, right? Oh, so you did. I love that. But, yeah. Oh yeah, and then he'll sleep on me for an hour and a half, two hours, while I'm sitting there listening to like music, like full blast. Now, if you turn the music oh, wow. off, does he wake up? So yeah, if I can, I can turn it down a little bit, but it still needs to keep playing. Okay, so this mm. is weird. This is a, an interesting thing. So it's the same thing with my with my son. Whatever sound or is going on when he falls asleep has to continue yeah. mm-hmm. for him to stay asleep. So if we're having conversations and he falls asleep, you got to keep having conversations. Otherwise, he wakes up. So yeah. in other words, get going quiet makes him wake up. Yeah, no, he's the mm-hmm. same way. If we what I a can, pain in the ass. I can take it from yeah, like I, a, I can take it from like blasting to like you know to where because Katrina's like it's so loud she wants to leave and she's like it's too loud. I'm like no, it's fine. He likes it. I like it. And so he'll fall asleep and then I can she can bring it down a little bit. But if she's we've done it before. Or she goes really low, and then all of a sudden he he gets startled and he wakes up. I'm yeah. like, yeah, he, the noise, he's fine. He's yeah, a, I've heard of some parents that even like they'll, they'll invite people over all the time and they'll stomp and everything like and, and make sure that there's like lots of like noise. And I was to get used to. a lot of a lot of people recommended that to me. They yeah. said, you know, you want to get them early on used to sleeping in that environment. Otherwise, if you create this like perfect silent environment always for them, yeah, good luck maintaining that. Yeah, because yeah. then you're gonna the inevitable is gonna happen. You're gonna travel with them or. He's going to be in an area where there's yeah. there's light or noise or a garbage truck or something else. Yeah, exactly. Now now I get the I understand the sentiment for that, but the the the, the reality is they're still not getting as good a sleep as when it's quiet. So right. So for example, I mean, I could crash out and fall asleep in this room, but it's not going to be as restful because of the bright lights. Even though I'm sleeping, yeah. it's not the same. Yeah. So this is the the struggle that we have like, all right, do we mm-hmm. do that? And but I get that sentiment because you also don't want to create such a, a, a situation where they can't sleep unless everything's perfect. Yeah. yeah. And then they get no sleep. Well, and some sti- sleep's better than it no sleep. It still ended up working because, uh, honestly, I lost that battle. I was the one who was like, let it be loud, let the light be in, everything mm-hmm. like that. Katrina was like, no. Like, our room is like, she made me put, uh, I didn't even know you could get this stuff. I think Home Depot is where we got it. You can put this inside your windows. You can put blackout like, stuff. Yeah, oh, yeah, like it's like a almost like a tent that mm-hmm. you you oh, yeah, you, you, you put that. on there. It just peels on and off really easy. So we have that. Then we have the blackout shades, and then we have curtains over. So like his room, it could be two o'clock in the afternoon, and you can't see shit. Dude, when we wow. take the baby for a walk in the because he falls asleep in the stroller sometimes, we bought these little baby like headphones that that like go over his head his ears and just muffle out sound. So he see <laughs> it's the funniest <laughs> thing. We put them on him. If he lets us put him on him, it's very effective. He'll stay asleep very long. But it's funny because they're big and he's got this little face. It squishes his, it squishes <laughs> it like his a cheeks. Little DJ. No, so it squishes his cheeks. So then we finally fall asleep. He's like this. <laughs> so I'll lift the thing and he'll, I'm like, oh my God, this is hilarious. Oh, I can't wait to show this picture to his did you, first girlfriend. Justin, did you guys, did you and Doug watch the uh, the video that Sal sent over, The Economist? Did you guys watch that? No. I haven't yet, no. Yeah, so Glenn Beck had, what, do you know the name of the no, guy? I don't know. So there's a name of a really popular economist. I, I, apparently he's predicted uh, some of the, <clears throat> the, the previous crashes pretty well. Yeah, really, really, according to him, it was really yeah. accurate how, mm-hmm. how well he's predicted the other crashes. And he came on Glenn Beck, Sal sent it over, and I listened to it. Uh, really good conversation. And he predicts- Harry Dent. Harry Dent. Yeah. So he predicts in the next 45, 60 days that we see this bubble burst that Sal's been talking about for some time. Yeah. Well, all the, I mean, everything points to the, the fact that it's crazy. They, they, how much money they're pumping into everything and yeah. everything keeps going up like crazy. There has to be some consequence at the end of this. That's, yeah. that's just, you know, logic. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. now he says it's going to get real bad because they we had the stock market, you know, bubble pop or the dot-com bubble pop. We had the real estate, you know, bubble pop in 2008. And he's saying that this next one is going to be a money bubble, meaning that because we've just, printing money and, and pumping into everything, that that's going to affect everything. Because if the money bubble pops, then it doesn't matter. Now, the hmm. now 
I agree more. So Glenn, act, Glenn Beck actually argued with him, or he challenged him. Mm-hmm. He says, you know, respectfully, I, I'd like to challenge that. And he says, I think that uh, if we do see it, we're not going to see it as soon as you think we're going to see it. Because he's calling 45, 60 days. So he's, this a, is, he's like this summer. Yeah, he's saying. Oh, what? Yeah, he's saying ah. uh, this is around the corner. We're going to see he's this. He's an alarmist. Huh? Right, this huge crash. And I, I think what Glenn Beck is saying, which is, I think we're going to see some crazy amount of money getting printed. Like I think ten trillion. Yes, like a ten, I agree. Yeah, well, I, I just see a lot of policies to keep pushing it out. You know, keep pushing as long as they can to 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 you know try and shield everybody from what the inevitable is. Going to yeah, be. I heard a rumor, and I don't know if this is true. I don't know if you read this anywhere, but I heard that Biden was trying to pass a, a relief bill for uh, the forbearances. That would actually allow people that were behind on their mortgage to extend their mortgages to forty years. Yeah, remember you, wow. you brought that up, and I looked it up. I couldn't find that anywhere. So yeah, was, I wish I remember where. Yeah. I well, it. nobody wants to feel. Nobody wants to be in office when the correction happens. So the goal is to totally. pump it till the next guy. Yeah, pump, yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> pump Please. to blame. Yeah, yeah, pump, pump and blame. Because what's going to require if you're looking at it and you're looking at everything, you say, okay, we yeah. need to fix this before it yeah. explodes. It's just like a huge shit ball. You, you, had, you, like, you still have to. You, you're going to have to cut stuff and make cost some pain, yeah. and you don't want to be the guy or girl in charge to do that. You want right. to you want to be the you, I'm out. It wasn't my fault. It's yeah. the next guy. Now, do you understand the 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 logic behind like that? So there, I forget the name of that that uh, economic philosophy to like just com- keep infusing money into the economy. And, it, it, it doesn't really exist. I mean, well, it does. Keynesian it, economics says that the, the you know they they talk about. I don't the, think it's Keynesian. I think it's uh, there's another name for it. And I wish I could remember. I'll look it up, and maybe the next time on the podcast, I'll bring it up. But I think the the idea is that so long as it grows the GDP year over year, that you can get away with it because of how big the GDP. Yeah, is. but you know what? Here, here's the problem with GDP. This there's a this is a big problem with GDP. GDP. If let's say the government says we're going to spend ten trillion dollars on I don't know uh, putting solar panels on every single building in America or something, right? Mm-hmm. That goes to GDP. So it could be, it could be, they could say, we're going to make, uh, we're going to create 10 billion paper straws. We could make, you know, we're going to make everybody's shirt red. We can come up with whatever they want. If they spend it, it goes to GDP. So if government spending goes up, GDP automatically goes up. So that's, it's a little bit misleading hmm. when you look at just GDP. So you're right. It is Keynesian. So yeah. it does it does say that. The theory proposes the spinning boost. Of, of agri- course I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> I, th- I thought there was another uh, term for for that where you just keep pumping money in so long as it continues to increase the GDP. It's like the uh, – and and because of all the, all the regulations they put in to protect – the bank, so they would never they would never fail after what we learned from 08. Yeah, no. It, if if you, I mean, the two competing uh, schools of thought with, I guess, what you call capitalism or free market economics would be Austrian and Ken, uh, and Keynesian. Keynesian. Um, but and the big difference is one believes in you know more of this kind of injection of cash, whereas the other one believes more in allowing the market to weed out bad or malinvestment. Yeah. Um, so this guy's theory, this Harry Dent guy, unfortunate name, Harry yeah, Dent. I know. I'm- I can't get past that. Yeah. Anyway, he um, he thinks that what's going to happen is that the central banks, everyone's going to turn on the central banks, and finally say that this is you know this is just not working, and we need to get rid of them. And obviously, it's whatever. Now, Glenn Beck, I agree with him. He thinks what's going to happen. He goes, no, they're going to level up and they're going to bring it on a global scale. So the argument will be mm-hmm. the reason why this happened, everybody, is because we need global. Currency. We need a global blank. We need global stimulus. That'll fix it. Yeah. And I, I agree with him. I think yeah. they'll just level up. That's what I th- I agree. I, I think what he says. I don't think we see a crash in 45, New 60 days. world order. Did any, oh, man. Did I mean, just is rem- that not exactly what it is? Dude. Th- this talk is reminding me of something <laughs> I've watched. Did you guys want, did either one of you guys watch the new, uh, it's a, it's the, the largest uh, um, art robbery ever no. on Netflix? Oh, yeah. I just watched the preview for that, but that was an excellent one to watch. Really good. Sweet. Okay, so... Now, okay, so the, the, I, don't, I forget the name of it, uh, what, what the name of the, maybe Doug can look at the documentary. It's, it's trending in a top 10 on Netflix right now. It's the, the largest art robbery something. I don't know what the title is, something like that. So one of the things, I'm watching it, right? So this is early on before I kind of, this unfolds. And I'm thinking, you know what? Like if someone steals a Rembrandt or a Picasso, like 
what the fuck do you do with it? I know. Who do you yeah. sell it to? Because yeah. you can't sell it to anyone. No. You can't even show it off because it's so famous that if somebody, the wrong person comes in your house and sees it. Now, I mean, this is, is time a factor? Like if, say, 10 years goes by, 20 no years. Way, bro. No way, No way. No way. Yeah. I, so try and guess because I'm going to give you guys the answer. That blew my mind. So here's what I would think. Okay. I would think that you can sell it. There's a black market for it, and it's much less expensive, or you make less money, but you'll sell it to like – some yeah. chic somewhere exactly. or yeah. some, some, some weird communist collector. party leader. Yeah, somebody on the black market. This is there. It's called, it's called This is a Robbery, the World's Biggest Art Heist. Wow. Okay, so so you're, you, you're, you're partially right. Okay. okay. So, and that was, so again. I, so, what I, well, what I, I speculated with Katrina that <laughs> it would be used as collateral <laughs> in the black Two market. Dings. So, for example, oh. so you're a big cocaine dealer and you've got, you know, 10 kilos. You And normally when you drug deal, you consign that to somebody. So ju let's say Justin, I'm the- I'm I, a big cocaine dealer. Yeah, so yes. Justin's a big cocaine dealer. I supply him. I've got- He obviously doesn't use it. Right. I have so to, <laughs> I've got 10 <laughs> kilos that I'm going to give to him. What are you saying? Him, okay. Mm -hmm. And in order for him to get that from me, since he doesn't have the money to pay all that up front, he would give me this piece of art oh. as collateral so he could go do that. Hmm. But that's not even the number way, number one way that this is actually used hmm. that I had no idea about. So because the art is such a big deal, right? There's only one of these Rembrandts. There's only one of these Picassos. This, I mean, this gets the FBI involved like crazy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what a lot of these, these like all, a lot of people that are, you know, thieves, what they do is they steal these and they use it as as a, a bartering chip to get themselves out of jail. Wow. So you 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 go rob one of these these paintings. You got this as like a get out of free jail card later on. So five years goes down the road and you get popped for doing a bank robbery. Mm -hmm. And the cops are just like, oh, you're going so in. So it's like you could say to them, wow. look, here's a deal. I, I, I can I can find this for you. Yes. If you it, oh if you lighten my sentence. Sounds wow. like we need Pink Panther. That's what it yeah. sounds like. Oh, wow. That's a, yeah. That's an yeah, old they, reference. They, is a door. Uh, yes, sir, that is a door. Yes, I knew that. I knew that. It's not locked, sir. Obviously. Stay where you are. I prefer to handle this alone. They actually interview like a, a notorious like uh, thief that had he, he has stole like hundreds and hundreds of more that he got That's away brilliant, with. Brilliant though, you get your get out of jail. Free I know card. that didn't even cross my mind because all I could think about originally was like, what the hell do you do with this? You yeah. can't sell it online. It would you be caught right away. You can't hang it up in your house. I know because even if you hang it in your house, no one's gonna believe you. I'm like, bro, this is a real right. They'll either, they'll like, either anyway. not believe you or they're gonna tell somebody yeah. like he's got that Rembrandt that's been missing. From I would think that you would sell. It on the same black market that yeah, sells but, like rhinoceros okay. horns. Yeah, and but shit think like about that. this: what is that person going to do? Like yeah, the person who buys it is not. Well, gonna... I don't know, bro. Right. Because do, have you guys ever seen uh, who's the 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 major drug kingpin of uh, was he Mexico or South America? Pablo Escobar. Mm. You ever seen pictures of his house? And his tigers and his shit that he has. This is like real exotic random stuff. Someone like that yeah. would put shit up like that in his house. Have yeah. you seen the, his yeah. gold Uzis? And yeah, all yeah. That? yeah. Have like you seen crazy. some of his, his old, like, no, what is how, bro, no. pull up, Doug, pull up Pablo Escobar's, like, yeah, he had like golden, like, assault rifles everywhere. Well, he's like, also, he had a gold room. He's yeah. like an exception to the rule, too. Like, the FBI is scared of that guy. You know what I'm saying? Like, somebody at that level is, is right. totally different. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Also, he's also, a threat. also think about this way you just stole a, a Rembrandt and you, you're like, I want to sell this. Pablo Escobar. How do you do, <laughs> so, do, you oh, yeah. do that? Yeah, let's meet in person. Yeah, yeah. No no exactly. How do yeah. you find that guy? You'll be right? like, I'll so. give this to you for five million. He goes, I'll take it for five dollars. Like, okay, here. Oh yeah, here, here. Yeah, you may yeah. have it. See if we can see the inside, your house the inside. inside. No, you got to do Pablo Escobar's gold room or gold. You know, weird. Oh, like, he, he owned tigers and monkeys and. Oh, he's got yeah, he's got gold. Chain. I don't know. I thought that ninja. I thought that was really fascinating because that never crossed my mind that you could use it as a bartering chip. But because it it's so infamous, right? There's only so many of these paintings that I mean, the FBI is involved. That's a big deal, dude. There's right. massive rewards out for it. So it's like you get caught up for some bank robbery, and it's like, hey, you know, I know where this, you know, that Rembrandt that was stolen ten years ago is at. If I 
tell you where it's at or I get it for you. Will you lighten my sentence or, or let me off? Oh, now, are man. they stealing this from museums or yes. people's personal collections? Muse okay. Both, actually. So the, the the guy that they interviewed in the in the, the um, documentary, um, he's everything. He's stolen from private facilities to up to museums and stuff. So they Dude, do this all. straight up like, Mish, I want to see like how he did it, right? Because don't they have like crazy lasers and security? Well, and no. So this <laughs> crazy is lasers. The, the, the biggest, <laughs> so the big, you would be blown away by the one that the biggest uh, art robbery. So it was estimated at two hundred million dollars in art was stolen from this place. Wow! And it's not even all of it. They just, they just took a handful of things. Mm -hmm. But if you saw how easy it was to, they, it was like they were super vulnerable, super vulnerable. They just walked That's in and crazy. took it. Yeah, the the security system Ooh, was. Well, it wasn't that like Justin's mm. seen too many movies. Yeah. He's like, aren't there like <laughs> lasers? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, you gotta break some kind of glass. You what know, is that movie with, smoke that comes out. What's that with the Sean Connery where it's uh, the the entrapment or what is it? Oh, oh is that the one with Catherine Zeta Jones? Yes, yes. Jones. yes. where yes. she like yes. she like does the little yes. the little yeah the, fa the famous scene where she's oh, in all black and I, she works I, through all the lasers. I distinctly flick. remember yes. that scene. <laughs> yeah. speaking, speaking of uh, things along those lines, uh, dude, you guys want to hear a scary statistic? You know how there's, I've been talking about now for a while how men's testosterone levels have been dropping? Oh, my God. For yeah, a, you're talking about like, what, 40 years from now, we're all going to be infertile? That, that, there's that, <laughs> right? Oh, that, oh. How, how bad fertility is yeah. getting. So here's something to put, it, put in perspective, right? I actually took a, a, a screenshot of this, and I got to find Oh, here we go. So here we go. Ready? The, this is crazy now. The, an average 22-year-old male today, so the average 22-year-old today, has got the testosterone levels of a 67-year-old in 2000. Oh, my God. Whoa. In the year 2000, bro. So a 67-year-old in the year 2000 had the testosterone level of, of, the, of the average 22-year-old male today. You can't wow. tell me. There's, this is crazy. Look at this. Average testosterone has fallen close to 50% in the last two decades. What? Yeah. There's, this is worldwide or is this yes. like, okay. Yes. Oh yes, it God. is worldwide. I so. told you one of the, mo one of the most random and interesting things I found with like being, doing what we're doing now, right? Being out on social media wow, and that's podcast. Insane. When I started talking about my testosterone use and my whole experience and the hormone therapy mm -hmm. and everything, that is the number one thing that I get DMs. I would not have guessed that. Mm -hmm. I would, I just, because when I got involved with using steroids back when I was in my early twenties, mm -hmm. it was very taboo and not yeah. a lot of people talked about it mm -hmm. and, and you just didn't hear a lot of people even talking about their testosterone levels and that is and, and it's and it's young guys it yeah. is it's yeah. guys under the age of 30 that are reaching but, out to me but, wanting to hear my opinion on what they should do whatever is causing this and the in most of the, the the theories are pointing to chemicals in the environment just exposure to these chemicals that affect our our hormones yeah you know it's not just low testosterone in men it's also how babies are developing in the womb. It's mm -hmm. how you, testosterone is a very important hormone for male development. It's what makes us men. Literally in in the womb, the 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 baby is essentially the same whether it goes female or male. Then the injection of testosterone is what makes the the fetus turn into a male, and that's of course triggered by chromosomes or whatever. But you know, so it's not just men, young men that are having this. And then again, low testosterone causes all kinds of problems: anxiety issues, low confidence. You lose uh, in your intelligence; you can actually decline. Cancer risks go up. It's really wild. I mean, fifty percent in two decades. Yeah. Holy shit, man! That this is, is super alarming. This is crazy, and it's a it's actually a very big deal. We need to figure out what the hell is going on. And wow. so there's something that we have in our there's some, there's chemicals that are are causing certain things. And they're finding a lot of these chemicals in like babies, breast milk. and. and do everything. you really think it's that? Or do you think it's just a combination of a whole bunch of stuff? What do you mean? Like, like, do I think there's a single chemical? No, no, I think, no, I, think I, don't, I don't think it's just chemicals is what I'm saying. I, I think it's like, I think oh. there's more like cultural stuff happening. I think there's a lot of things that are probably I think Or did the cultural stuff start happening because of the low decline? Yeah, I think it's mostly, I think it's mostly, to see that much of a decline in, in one, not even one generation, 20 years, right? That is a strong environmental push. There's something coming from the environment that's really effective. So I would love to see mm. then a study of like, you know, because there's definitely people that um, even a decade ago that are raising kids like very uh, hippie-like, right? All whole food, all no xenoestrogens, like everything is like they're very careful of all that. 
it would be interesting to find a community of people that have been consistent with that since kids' birth and see where their hormone levels are and compare them to somebody I'd love who's, to, I'd love to see who's that like, too. whatever, yeah. formula, everything, chemicals, everything. I don't yeah. care. I take it I'd like out. to see that too, but here's the problem. They find these chemicals in the urine and blood of people who don't even use a lot of yeah. these products. It's so prevalent in it's like everything. Making, it's in the rain and everything else. Like it just, uh, yeah, it just, it, it makes its way in the environment everywhere. Yeah, but I would, think, I would think though, if that's the only place you're getting it and then you do a good job of avoiding you it. You should all see the, at least some improvement. Yeah, yeah, you would see some. There'd be less yeah damage because it isn't that i mean the in the water because you brought up that the other day and things like that 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 has to be on the lower end right as far as the offenders or is that the highest you know? I, I i so the ones that they're highlighting are these plastics uh like bpa was one of them right these plastics mm -hmm. that are and look plastics everywhere and plastics revolutionized our lives yeah but um, a lot of these these chemicals they find in some of these plastics, they think are the big main offenders. Well, that's the conundrum, right? I mean, you look at like surgery, you look at like plastic for everything in terms of like medical advancements mm -hmm. has been crucial for all that. But now, you know, the unintended consequences now that those actually you know give us chemicals well, that are this is an existential this is an exist existential threat if you think about it, right? If if you if this continues at in this path. We could. This could literally be the biggest problem that mankind has ever encountered. If we become infertile, yeah. you know what'll, what? What are we going to do? We we'll just clone? Like how are we going to have kids? Just start cloning each other? Because I don't know where you would go from there. This is all great science fiction movie. This is fucking great. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking right yeah. now too. As I'm listening, yeah. to this. Well, is this real life? Yeah. Like, hey, what's happening? Hey, since we're talking about studies, so check this out. This is pretty cool. So here's how protective muscle mass is. Uh, in the body. So this study was talking about how protective it was for heart disease. Men with a lot of muscle mass and high body fat. So guys who have a lot of fat, but also a lot of muscle, decrease the risk of uh, heart disease by 26%. So just having because more- Because of the muscle. Because of the muscle. Yeah. Just having more muscle, even with high body fat. Now the men who were lean with more muscle- decrease their risk by 60%. Yeah. But still, it just goes to show how protective muscle is uh, for your health. I was having a conversation with my brother over the weekend. I finally got to see him and see his new place. And um, I mean, he had he had one of the uh, vaccines and had a really crazy reaction to it. The second shot, he had a crazy reaction to what it. What happened? Uh, well, basically, he got all the symptoms of COVID. Like, uh, in, in, <laughs> <laughs> like he might as well just got it. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it was like for three or four days, it was just like out. And uh, but his wife was was fine. Nothing not, like didn't even feel anything. Uh, and the thing about it is, like, my brother and I are like polar opposites. Like, it, it, he used to play sports with me. Like, he was actually like really talented at sports, but like he never really got into the working out side of it, and like just avoided lifting weights. Like nothing. Like, like so he'll do some hikes and things, but he's never really like built muscle. And so I'm wondering if that has you know a, a factor in all this of you know having that sort of like extra barrier of protection against you know these foreign sure yeah like I, I would think I was, so. I was bringing that up with him, and because he's never even like been interested. I haven't pushed it on him. I actually was getting the, the, your book for him because he'd be like the perfect guy to understand. He needs to know why it's it's so essential that you lift weights. Yeah, and it, it's good because it's coming from someone else. I can imagine he probably doesn't want to listen to a thing you say because you're his Oh, yeah, and he's brother. the older brother, right? right? So he's got all the answers. I was always coming to him for all the answers. Well, so. speaking of talented athletes and not wanting to listen to anything you have to say, did you guys see my Instagram? Mm, which one? The, my Instagram post about the uh, the um, oh my God, what's the name of it? tonal when I did the, oh, the everybody the one point six billion valuation. Now you said is it is it overvalued? And yeah, no, I didn't say overvalued. I said is it overrated, underrated, yeah, properly yeah. rated? Yeah, was yeah. It? So I literally you're, put you're just trying to get a feel for it. Yeah, so I literally wrote I did a picture that is on their website. I think of their their product, and I put uh, you know, tonal receives one point six billion dollar valuation. Uh, overrated, underrated, properly rated. I just wanted to get a feel of my audience. And boy, did I piss off my buddy. Oh, I saw that. My buddy, I got on there my buddy too. Brendan got on there. And and now, I, I didn't actually know this, and I, obviously he's invested in it, right? <laughs> so <laughs> so hearing me rag on it and talk about how I think it's overrated uh, is just totally, I mean, he took it. He took offense. Though, oh, man. man. Well, we you, went you back. Know, he went so hard on me about it that because I He don't, kept comparing it to Instagram, which I thought was silly. He's like, oh, Instagram at one point wasn't making any money, and now look- you know what the problem is? And we've seen, how many times have we seen this, Adam, uh, where people come into the fitness space 
and they don't know fitness, uh, and so they view it like, uh, I don't know, like a tech company. Oh, yeah. And they say, oh, it's got technology. It's got this many users. We've seen other tech companies grow from there. Yeah, it doesn't work like an app. No, it doesn't It doesn't work that way. Um, it, that's the bottleneck. The bottleneck, people have to work out. Well, and it, keeping people working out consistently, and a lot of them, like if you difficult. can figure that out, you've yeah. solved the, the the puzzle, right? Yeah, that that was my. I mean, and that his argument was that because I I haven't actually seen all their financials and know the quote unquote stickiness of the product, uh, I have you know I have no leg to stand on to even put my opinion in. I was like, well, okay, dude, I I I don't know all those things, but I think my experience in this space for as long as I've been doing this, I have some sort of a leg to stand yeah. on in this and. To your point, that's exactly right, is that fitness is a different monster. A lot of the, all, not a lot, all of the tech companies that have gone public and made, you know, billions of dollars, yeah, the stickiness in those, they're addictive. I mean, they they suck people in and people use them day in and day out for hours forever. Fitness has never been that way. No. Nothing has been invented. Nothing has ever came out in the history of us working out that has been so sticky that you no. become addicted to that it, compares and, it, it gets to social media. and then it dies. Yes. yes. The, the, the most the, the most effective modality or whatever you want to call it that's gotten people to stay the most consistent is personal training. Nothing comes close to personal training. And even personal training yeah. isn't even the same universe as like social media. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, people use Instagram on their toilet all the time. They're looking at whatever. People, it just this is the problem. This is what we're trying to solve, right? Is yep. to get people to well, that's the, start and stay consistent. That's the other thing. The other point that I brought up was that you know anything that is a band aid, right, for this, like it, or is treating the symptom and is not the cure mm -hmm. and is not revolutionary, it is not going to stick around and blow up into be these worth billions and billions of dollars. And a lot of these businesses, and I know I was really going hard on him because he's also, you know, a big investor in Orange Theory. And it's, I said, you know, I hate to tell you this, man, but these, these aren't, they aren't the answer, man. Mm -hmm. Orange Theory is not the answer for everybody. I'm sorry. Are there some people that enjoy it and have success with it? Sure. I'm not denying that, but it's not really solving the problem. When we talk about obesity and the things that we talk about on this show, mm -hmm. that type of training is not the answer. We and the saw that. We saw it with curves. Yes. We saw it with CrossFit, Orange Theory, and this is a cycle. And someone will come out with a new way to work out that's fun, gets people hyped and motivated, which doesn't last, and it goes like this, and, and that's, it goes like this. And part of why part of why Orange Theory did so well, and I remember, I remember seeing it and going, this is brilliant. Mm -hmm. I mean, they integrated tech into the Group X type of training model very, very well. They, they took a piece from the CrossFit community thing yep. and some of the exercises and the circuit trading and the, com the competitiveness. They blended new good tech and it was clean. It was very seamless. And they created this gr incredible environment that built a lot of hype and energy and motivation for people. Mm -hmm. But that what we know, that's all fleeting. Like mm -hmm. eventually... People get tired of that. Eventually, achy joints come and happen. And eventually, what ends up happening is they fall off, and then the newness wears off, and then we're on to the next trend. Yeah, yeah it's crazy because, I mean, even Fitbit, like I had high hopes for Fitbit because they like centered it around community, which was like one of the first tech companies really understand that it's about bringing your friends in, bringing your family in, like other people. It's like a support system. Uh, but even that, like the the newness the, of it, the the excitement of it, just totally just Dude, went away. Fitbit, My Fitness Pal, Buddy Bug, uh, the Nike, the yeah, Nike yeah, one. No. They all, they no, all, they're not tech companies. They're stop, all cool. Yeah, stop looking at them like they're Apple or Google or whatever. They're fitness companies that use tech, and so you have to treat it that way. Yeah, it's not going to be like a tech. So company. if the fitness isn't good, it, it's just never going to work. You have to like somehow the unicorn's going to be both of those together. But I don't know what that looks yeah, like. If for okay, my here's my opinion. In my opinion, if you want the masses to consistently exercise, it has to be a cultural phenomenon. There is no product that'll ever do it. And what's my evidence? You look at cultures where, you know, like you go to like in certain parts of Asia where people wake up in the morning and they exercise. It's part of their culture. Yeah. In fact, some companies do this in Japan. Mm -hmm, right. they, before they start work, they do calisthenics. Yeah, or after dinner, it's cultural that everybody goes for a walk. Or cities are designed in ways to where it's less convenient to drive and more convenient to walk. That's the only time you see people exercising That's right. regularly. Mm -hmm. It has to be mm -hmm. a part of the culture. There is no, what the products are going to do is they're just going to trade that same 20% 
back and forth. Now, what we're trying to do is we're trying to work with the deeper, you know, part. And this is what we're trying to do with the podcast and what, what, what we learn through personal training. But still, we're not going to solve it. It's a massive hill to it's climb. It's a massive hill. It's very, very cha- challenging. And if it's not a part of the culture, ugh. It's going to be a very difficult thing. Yeah, and I'm. And by the way, I'm all. I mean, I'm. I'm rooting for these things because it, it, here's the thing. Absolutely. Even, even yeah. if it just treats the symptom, if it if it brings new people into searching for the cure, I'm all for it. Absolutely. You know, so I'm not like, and I wanted to make that clear that like this is not me. I'm not coming out bashing tonal. I'm not bashing or theory. I'm just telling everybody who's listening. Mm. It ain't the fucking cure. Right. This isn't the answer to you like long-term fitness and health. It is not. It's a cool thing that has got a lot of hype and energy around. Brilliant marketing, mm-hmm. great timing right now that everybody's hyped about. But I'll tell you right now, you know, fast forward 10 years and tell me if it's still yeah. around crushing. The it won't cure be. is within you. You know what I mean? That's, that's right. The, that's the truth. You know, I got. I want to circle back real that's quick heavy. because I know I'm going to get DMs of people saying, what products should I avoid? I'm talking about the testosterone thing that I brought up with the chemicals. Oh, the plastic okay. and stuff. I'm in, I always get DMs, and I always forget to give people like takeaways. So mm-hmm. here's, a, here's a good takeaway. Don't store things in plastic containers, um, and don't drink out of plastic uh, water bottles. Mm-hmm. That Those have been shown to leak plastic. Not only that, but to leak chemicals, but also in the manufacturing process of making plastic bottles, there's microscopic plastic pieces mm-hmm. in pretty much every single bottle. If you have a plastic shaker cup and you store it in your car and you wash it or whatever, it, hot, cold, it, it little by little starts to leach these chemicals. Mm-hmm. So you want to use uh, you know metal or glass. Uh, I know Mir is a company we've worked with in the past. They make really good uh, containers and they're they last and they don't leach chemicals. So it's a good place to start. Yeah, right. Well, I love a company like Mir too because every time you make a purchase, they're also giving back and start, they're doing right. So you want to talk about a cool company to invest in if, and also take care of your health. Totally. Hey, I hope you're enjoying the podcast. Real quick before we get to the questions, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out all of our free guides. We got a lot of great free information you can download and learn some great stuff about burning body fat, building muscle and much more. Again, it's mindpumpfree.com. All right, enjoy the rest of the podcast. All right, our first question is from Andrew Can one How do you bulk without gaining extra fat tissue when the fat cells already exist in your body? All right, so I'm going to reword this question. How do you bulk, gain mm-hmm. muscle without gaining any uh, extra body fat? All right, any? So, it's virtually Yeah, impossible. well, here's, there's a couple things here, okay? Mm-hmm. Number one, it doesn't take that many extra calories to build muscle. Um, you're not going to gain muscle anything faster than a couple pounds a month. You know, maybe faster if you're a new person, you got crazy genetics or whatever. But even at three pounds a month, which would be amazing, if you gain three pounds of muscle in a month, that'd be phenomenal. If you did the math on how many calories it took to produce that, it's not much at all. It's like an extra 50 calories a day. So uh, on, on the one hand, you want to bulk in a way where you're eating minimal extra calories to build muscle. By the way, you also want to have a very strong muscle building signal along with that. So you want to have a good uh, workout program uh, that's telling your body to build muscle. But here's the other side of that, because I know people listening are like, "Uh, it doesn't work for me. I got to eat way more calories to build any muscle at all. Well, the reason uh, behind that is because eating extra calories also sends a muscle building signal. Believe it or not, if you bumped your calories by 500 calories above maintenance or even 1,000 above maintenance, if there's an anabolic uh, you know, part to it, right? It does send a muscle building signal. So this is where we get into this kind of gray area. Now, I know you said, Adam, for example, that it's impossible or whatever. If the signal is strong enough, the body will build muscle. And all I have to do is point to uh, <clears throat> studies where men are given injections of testosterone, so they're given steroids, and their body weight oftentimes doesn't change, but they lose fat and build muscle at the same time. Now, of course, they have a very loud hormonal signal, but that just highlights that the signal is the most important thing. Mm. If you're really telling your body to build muscle effectively, you're getting good sleep, obviously you're eating healthy, and you're following a workout. This is the most important part. You're following a workout that is appropriately intense, has the appropriate amount of volume, is utilizing the best exercises, you're seeing strength gains. If that is sending a very, very good muscle building signal, doesn't take that many more calories uh, to build muscle. I, it really, I think you kind of have to be a, a black belt to do this, right? Totally. Yeah. And and it's really or a genetic uh, freak. Well, it's less to, uh, and even if you are a genetic freak, it's still um, the 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 mental discipline that you have to have totally. be, because you have to understand that 
you could very well be building muscle at the at the perfect rate and not see the scale move whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And it, so if you're somebody that's trying to build and you know you're eating at you or you think you're eating extra calories and you don't see the scale going up anyway, it really messes with your head. It really yeah. makes you you're think you don't want to ramp it up. Yeah. Or you might even see like the scale go down. To your point, you could lose body fat. I mean, if you eat more calories, you speed up the the, the metabolism, you build some more muscle, which speeds up the metabolism. And so there's a chance that you could add it a pound of muscle, but then also maybe lost a pound and a half of fat yep. along your two or three week journey and then go, oh my God, I'm definitely not doing this right. I'm losing weight. You're right. But in reality, you could actually be just in per so the hardest part about this is the, is the mental discipline to just stay the course, to believe that okay, I've 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 figured this out. I've got enough calories. I know I'm eating well. I'm I've got I'm following a good program. I'm training consistently. I, I and I'm seeing strength go up and just yeah. staying the course. There's no way around it. Like it's going to if if you were to to try to really like nail this down it's going to take a a really long time and spread out and and really managing your calories at a, at a level that you know is just barely noticeably in, in a surplus like you, you just you just have to very much be meticulous about it i just don't know that a lot of people have that kind of discipline. no i i wouldn't this i sucked at this for years right because i was the you know the skinny kid that wanted to gain weight and so the scale was so important to me if the scale went up well now i'm i'm crushing and i'm doing a good job um, but the reality is um, that doesn't always tell you everything. So there's a few tips that I'll give you that I think can help a lot. And this is just based on my own experience. Number one, are you getting stronger? Okay. So if your strength is going up, you're definitely not losing muscle or it's very unlikely that you're losing muscle and it, it, you're probably gaining muscle or at least going in that direction. So are you getting stronger? Number two, also use either body fat tests or circumference measurements. Now for me, when I gain body fat, it's typically around my waist. So if I measure my waist, I can tell if I'm getting leaner or gaining body fat. If the scale goes up and my waist doesn't go up, it's muscle. Or if the scale goes up and my waist goes down, holy cow, I'm doing the the, the only grail. reason why I don't like that one is because of like you know inflammation in the gut, water retention, and a lot of things. Yeah, that, you can't take one measurement yeah, to the, heart. Yeah. You got to do it like kind of. I a like trend. the body fat one, and you know if if you follow me for, since the beginning, this is actually how I built my Instagram. So when I when I came out and I measured my body fat percentage, and it was at twenty percent body fat, which at that time in my life I'd never been that high before. I was two hundred and twelve pounds, and I when I when I showed the journey. I actually, my goal was to stay at 212. And that's where, so when I came all the way down to 7%, I was 212 still. Mm -hmm. And the goal was to show people that I didn't need to have this huge swing one way or the other. I didn't need to add on 20 pounds of muscle to then lose, you know, 30 pounds total and a body fat. It was like, I'm going to hover right around this 212. Now, mind you, week to week, you know, I had some 214s, the 211s, and but the goal was to kind of that my home base was 212. Right. And, and the way I looked at it was if I ever went, if I started to creep up, I would kind of back off calories a little bit. If I started to really dip down, I would increase a little bit, but I was really trying to stay because I knew I had plenty of body fat to trim off. I knew that I was consistent with training, which I wasn't before that. I was sending a signal to build muscle. If I could keep my calories at a place, that my body was kind of hovering around that weight, I was training correctly and consistently, and I was eating good, that I'm probably having a nice little exchange. Yeah, and then here's the other part of it too, and this took me a long time to understand, is that building muscle is a slow-ass process. So if, if you're bulking and you're like, oh, hell yeah, I gained 10 pounds this month, it's probably not all muscle. It's actually probably mostly yeah. not muscle. You just, nobody builds muscle that fast, Not unless that it's muscle memory. So unless you were super buff before and you stopped working out, lost a lot of muscle and then started working out, or you're like the one in uh, a million or a billion. But muscle building is a slow process. So if you're inching up on the scale ever so slowly, where every couple months you go up a couple pounds or a pound and it sticks and you're getting stronger and you're noticing in the mirror that you see more definition, you're probably gaining muscle. But boy, does it take a ridiculous amount of patience because I know what you're talking about, your journey that you did, Adam, where you, you, you where you did that weight transfer. That was after years of you, you know, working out. Yeah, right. No way no, I would have- your body for I would have never been able to do that yeah. as a kid because I was so impatient. Was oh like, yeah, no, I didn't have the discipline as a kid to do that. I'm glad you uh, you you brought that up though. I, I was just going to say, you just brought muscle up- Muscle built no, the, no, 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 talking about the um, muscle memory. Yes. So I get tagged on this a lot. So this is a good time to, to bring this point up. So we get tagged a lot on people that show like these crazy transformations. Yeah. 
And people want me to like point out how fake it has to be. And uh, uh, being truthful, they're not always that. Some of them are fake. A lot of people Photoshop. A lot of people do that. But for me to come in and, and accuse somebody and say just because they showed this ridiculous transformation in sixty to ninety days it is fake. That's no. If you've been training for as long as we have, I can I can whip my I can really make a huge difference yep. because of how much muscle I've built over the years. If I let myself really go for like six months and fall out of shape. I can shred body fat and build muscle really quick and show a major change in 60 to 90 days. So those don't always mean that they're fake. It might mean that somebody has been training for a really long time. They know their body. They know their shit. They know what they need to do calorie wise. They probably were inconsistent. They just have to tighten it all up. Yeah, and they just got to they got to tighten it up, and Dude, they tighten it up, and they actually make a, a massive change. When I had that. shoulder surgery years ago, I remember you know if you've ever had a cast on and you take it off, it's always frightening. You take it yeah. off, you're like whoa. <laughs> I remember stick my, arm. Yeah, like there was like nothing. My shoulder was non-existent, and I don't remember how it was like a couple months when I was finally able to work out. And I measured my arm. I lost like two inches or two and a half inches or more in terms of muscle, and just, it didn't look like my arm at all. And it came back so fast. It was literally weeks where it was right back to where it was before. So muscle memory is a real thing. Yeah. Next question is from Jackie eighteen. Is there evidence to suggest that eating more meals more frequently throughout the day is better for weight loss than two meals with the same amount of quality calories? There's okay. So here's the deal with this mm. now. Now we've been told for a long time uh, in in popular fitness culture that eating small meals uh, was superior, right? So if you eat this, this was the the story at least or mm -hmm. the narrative. If you eat small meals, it stokes your metabolism throughout the day. It feeds your muscles amino acids throughout the day. Um, therefore, it's better for burning fat, building muscle. So you need to eat small meals throughout the day. Okay. Is there evidence to support this? Hardly any to zero. The, the reality is the thing you should pay attention to, the thing that should dictate whether or not you eat small meals or you eat fewer and larger meals should be based on how you feel. Personal All, preference. That's the most important thing. Now, the reason why this started was because bodybuilders who are eating shit tons of calories, you're eating 5,000 calories a day, you're not going to do that in two meals. Yeah. You're going to eat five meals. It just makes more sense. And then supplement companies got their hands on this and said, oh, what a great way to sell meal replacement bars and powders because mm -hmm. if I sell the average person that they need to eat five meals a day, yeah. they're going to eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner, or maybe just lunch and dinner. It's difficult to prep all those ahead of time, and then so you get other companies, you know, the six-pack yeah. bags yeah. and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But, I mean, that's that's something that's been crammed in, in almost, like, everybody's head in terms of, like, that's the healthiest way to approach it. But, honestly, it makes a lot more sense for a bodybuilder trying to get more calories in because big, huge meals, uh, you know, that's pretty difficult to digest. Absolutely. Well, this myth originally came from the whole thermogenic effect from the yeah, calories, which is which is the same, right? So if you eat a four thousand cal two meals that total up to four thousand, two thousand, two thousand calories, you get this massive thermogenic effect, which is the same as if you mm. take those four thousand calories and you spread it over four meals or six meals, right? Right. So they're just smaller thermogenic effects. So yeah, it's, the net thermic effect is the same. Is the same. Right. So it doesn't really matter. Where I see a lot of value in this, and where I would have clients do this all the time, was actually just to teach them portion control. It, it, you know, you do a two massive meals. Mm. It's really hard to kind of get an idea of like what six ounces this is, what twelve ounces of that is, yeah. is how many calories is this really? Where if I had if I had a clients and I say, okay, your total calories is twenty eight hundred calories we get to eat, and I divide that up over five or six meals, they see these little small portions and get an idea of like where their meal, what their meal size should kind of look like. I, and and you just kind of teach good behaviors that way. That I liked it for that. Or to your point, you guys bring up with the bodybuilders, is yeah. When I was eating five thousand calories, yeah, good luck eating that in two meals, mm -hmm. especially if you're eating whole foods. Just not happening. So for those reasons, it makes sense. At the end of the day, it's whatever you're most consistent with. That's so it. if you do better with prepping five or six meals, and that you like to just kind of graze all day with mm -hmm. small meals, versus because here's the thing that there, I also like about that too. You never get really, really hungry. And what I have found when clients get really hungry, the cravings set in and you're more likely to make bad choices. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but when I have a long day here and, you know, I go like a, you know, and I'm, you know, unintentionally intermittent fasting and it's 12 hours I've eaten. Boy, everything sounds yeah. good. <laughs> I'm driving home from work and, I, and I'm easily influenced in. You know, Katrina's calling me. What do we want to do for dinner? And I'm like, I haven't eaten all day. I'll have whatever you right, want to have. Right. 
versus if I had already had three, four meals, they were balanced and everything like that. Uh, I'm not starving. Like, oh, we'll wait and then I'll have another one of my meals. So that's another reason why I like the small meals. And that's that's more of the mental discipline. Yeah, and again, it's I, I've had clients that do far better with fewer meals. It mm-hmm. actually helps them eat less calories and they're busy. And when they're working, it's not that big of a deal. I've had clients like what Adam's saying where they prefer right. to eat every few hours and have a meal. Personal preference, 100% should dictate this for you. How do you, and for me, for example, I'll give you an example. Eating small meals throughout the day doesn't work with my gut. It just doesn't work well with my gut health. Mm -hmm. I do far better having long breaks in between meals, reduces inflammation in my gut, helps me with digestion. And I just feel a lot better doing it that way. But I know people who are the opposite. I know people who are like, man, I can't eat one big meal. It hurts my stomach. I'm doing better with smaller meals. Personal preference should dictate this. There is no real you know, significant advantage uh, one way or the other, except for the extremes. Like, obviously, you don't want to eat like once every other day or, you know, you don't eat 10 times in a day. But within reason, doesn't make a big difference. Really just follow your, what works best for you, what makes you feel the best. Next question is from Jade Taylor Turner. What's your opinion on F45 training? Mm. Oh, here we go. Yeah. Now, they're they're kind of like uh, Orange Theory, yeah, right? Where they, they do a lot of the circuits and they go from exercise is to exercise. Is that what that is? Yeah. I wanted somebody to – because like, I know Orange Theory, obviously. I've, I've even done one of their workouts, but I, I've never seen a F45. Very similar. So You know most about it. Yeah, so. yeah. Less tech, more lifting weights. Okay. So, you know, Orange okay. Theory has – they do three rotations. You have uh, rowing, running, and then weight section, and then they rotate throughout the hour. And every blo- every time you do a workout, it's a little bit different. But for the most part, it's one-third, one-third, mm-hmm. one-third. Uh, F45 is primarily like more boot camp style. Like you go get your weights. Kind of – you guys remember how uh, like body pump was? In yeah, the- yeah. yeah. So you have like a little station yourself and you have the little mini barbell and weights or dumbbells and an instructor that's teaching like this weight training class. So it's a little more focused on weight training than Orange Theory is. Now, is it traditional resistance training where you rest? No, it's it's still very circuit-like. Yeah, Yeah, it's still very circuit-like. They're not, you know, and and that's, it's, it's unfortunate because, you know, it wouldn't be a bad model, but they, they know for reasons to keep people entertained and going right. is to is to keep the could you imagine a group x or a, a group instructor like this standing up front of and making everybody okay we're gonna rest for two minutes yeah, now what do we do for yeah. two minutes yeah and just <laughs> everyone standing they still. gotta have real good stories or like yeah you know anecdotes to yeah so, there. i yeah. mean i remember when i was teaching orange theory i would yell this right i would stop a class like i turn the music on stop the class and i'd yell at everybody in the weight train rest yeah stop mm-hmm. if you are able to go around and around with no rest go heavier you need to go heavy enough and i want to look over over here and see people sitting down. I remember having to yell at people, tell people that, like, I want to see you resting. I remember you saying, too, and I thought this was brilliant, when you'd have those rest periods where you'd actually educate them, like, you'd pick a topic. You'd say something about nutrition that, uh, you know, you could kind of use that time to educate instead of just, you know, wasting it and looking around aimlessly. Yeah, the weakness with F45 is the same weakness you see with lots of, of group classes with weights. Number one, it's not resistance training. It's cardio with weights. You could do cardio with anything, and this is a cardio with weights type of class. Number two, it's a class, mm-hmm. um, and it's very difficult to tailor workouts when you're dealing with a, with that group uh, type environment. Now, is it smart business and marketing? Well, yeah, it's fun, it's exciting, it's probably exploding. It's probably going to, you know, at some point hit a peak and then tank like other fitness uh, trends and fads do. But as far as a workout is concerned, you're going to get some conditioning, some stamina, and you'll get some cardiovascular work done. Mm-hmm. But if you're looking for the benefits that resistance training provides where you're building muscle, speeding up your metabolism, making your body more resilient in that particular sense, um, then you're doing the wrong thing. You want to do traditional. They have Mark Wahlberg, don't they? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, there you go. That's how I Mark Wahlberg. And save your DMs, okay? Because I know we're going to get DMs of people that work there and like, oh, Adam, this and that, da, 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 da. They're all going to (laughs) say, I mean, that's every time we talk about something like that, like, we, uh, you know, offend anybody that works there. Listen, it's it's cool, dude, but it's not ideal. It's just group training will never be ideal for people. There's there's such an individual variance for every single person that if you have a classroom yeah. of 12 to 15 people, and, the, and here's the thing, group training for, for, for muscle, for building muscle and burning fat, not ideal. Could you do yoga or like a, mm-hmm. a priming class, like mm-hmm. where everybody, it's a little bit different, like the goals are different. Yeah. 
And so you can get away more with that, but something as, as yeah. specific as... Or conditioning, like on a sports team or something. Well, like there's it. just so many more variables that, that dictate whether you're going to lose fat or build muscle. Yeah. If they're, if one person in that class, their diet is dialed in, this this way, a modality of training, they haven't trained this way in a long time, This might their body might respond perfect mm. for this class. But then that maybe that person who's right next to them doing the same thing is in a, is in a too much of a caloric deficit or over consuming that it doesn't even really matter or not resting whatsoever and, and doing light weights. Mechanics so matter so much yeah, with so traditional many, resistance so training variables. and how your body moves. It matters so much. And I'll look, I'll even argue uh, against what you're saying. Uh, yes, you could do class in yoga. Will it, is it far superior to have an instructor do yoga with just you? Yeah, no, absolutely. Right. So it's, it's the same weakness you see with all classes, but as far as resistance training is concerned, you get like this much of the benefit of resistance training. It's mostly cardio. Mm -hmm. Next question is from Austin Owens. Actual, which training style do you all prefer? Percentage based or RPE based? If not either of these, what do you recommend? I laugh at these questions. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, if people you know, get so hung up on those, they things. do, and it's not that. I mean, I, I understand if you're a competitive athlete, Bro, and it no, makes more sense. I, like a power lifter, that's about it. Yeah, that's it. That's what I mean. That's, that's, it. It. that's where I stop. That's it. If you're a power lifter, this makes total sense, and it's the only time I don't laugh at this. Mm -hmm. But I built a competitive physique. The one percent of the one percent at the professional level without ever paying attention to any. No, of this shit. I, I like never once. I like feel. It's always feel for yeah, me. Yeah. It's always feel because I could have a client come in and you know maybe today we're supposed to do eighty percent of whatever, and I ask them, hey, how do you feel? Or I'm watching them as a trainer. Yeah. Oh, it looks like they're a little out of it or whatever. We're going to go easier. You have to train your body in, in, for that moment. How you feel physically and also mentally. By the way, you can feel great physically, feel poor mentally, and that'll have a massive effect on your performance and how your body recovers and responds. So really, it should be based off of how you feel. Now, here's the problem with that, is that a lot of people want objective measures. Yeah. Like, tell me number, whatever. Now, I know heart rate variability was promised to do that. The problem right. with heart rate variability was uh, it's kind of a pain in the ass. You got to be real good at measuring, have that right technology to do it. Now, what it did- it's not always accurate either. Not always accurate, uh, but it was better than nothing. It was probably the most objective right. way that we saw. Um, and then not that long ago, we had uh, uh, DeFranco on the show. And I thought I he said- I love what he Was doing. absolutely brilliant. So I'll show- Which, of course, it came from someone like him. Yeah, Somebody who we respect in the industry, one of the best- trainers and coaches that's been doing this for a really long time. Of course, he came up yeah. with a, a a simpler yet very effective way. Very effective. So I'm going to show everybody. So uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can see I have a, and I don't know how to say this right, a dime, a dynamometer. 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 Dynamite. Yeah. Anyway, you, you, you essentially you squeeze this and it measures your grip strength. And so here's what he said. And I thought this was absolutely brilliant. So these are devices that are very typically inexpensive. I know we have one on our site, so you can buy these on our site if you want to. You Essentially, what you do before your workout, it, first off, you want to set up a uh, kind of like a, a, a control, right? Yeah. So every day before you work out- You want to calibrate. You want to squeeze this as hard as you can with both hands and, and write down the, the whatever number you got. And then also at the end of your workout, mark down how you felt. How strong were you? Did you have a lot of energy? After about a week or two, you'll start to see some correlations. Oh, on the days I had great workouts, my number was this. On the days I was whatever, my numbers were this. Then you can start to use the number that you get on your, your gripper test or whatever as a way to dictate, for those of you that want objective numbers, how hard you should work out. So you squeeze it and say, oh, wow. It's a readiness gauge. It's testing your CNS. Which is great. So, so you, you kind of know what you're working with for that day and like how, how hard you should push. Or, you know, it's just a, it's, it's a, it's a more of a, a way to actually find a real metric out there to kind of identify uh, how you're feeling. But it's still feel-based. Yes. Well, yes. That, that's the reason why. I mean, our good buddy, Craig Caperso, he built an app around this. It was the flaw that we saw in this was like, you can't have a computer mathematically figure this out for yeah. you. Perpetual progress doesn't exist. No, and it's all over the place. And it and it and it can't figure out what happened last night. I mean, last night could have been you got some crazy news that was devastating with your family. Then you stayed up all night. You got terrible sleep, and then here you are for showing up to your workout. And you that that you can't mathematically figure that out. Wow. And your computer has already told you what you're supposed to do that day. Where mm -hmm. me as a coach, if I was training you, I would ask you, How was your night last night? You said, Oh, I just found out my yeah. my grandmother passed yeah. away and I didn't sleep very much. 
me as an experienced coach knows right away. I might have had a plan today that I was gonna I was gonna push you to this RPE or I was gonna yeah. push you at this percentage, but now I'm calling an audible because I know how what happened last well, night. Well, well see, this the, is the problem too. Back to our earlier conversation about tech products, like they, this is what they don't understand. Like there's a lot more to it than than ones and zeros. You can't just it doesn't just work out in a perfect formula and, and laid out like there's so many yeah. variables and you have to have like individual coaching to make it work. Right, and, and this is why I like and again. It's not perfect. You got to base it off of how you feel and how you perceive yourself to feel. This is important because people tend to second guess themselves. Do I really feel good? Do I really feel bad? Whatever you feel, you feel, and that's kind of your truth, right? That's the truth of how your body's going to perform essentially. But the reason why I like the dy dynamo meter, dynamo meter, I think I'm saying right, is because it measures in real time your CNS uh, and how great you're squeezing mm -hmm. right there. So it's like literally right before you work out, you crush it with your hand and you see what your score was and then use that in combination with how you feel. Like, I feel kind of crappy. Mm -hmm. Let me check. You squeeze it. You see your number. You're like, oh yeah, definitely. Well, I have an the, easier workout. And that's today. the the, tr the the trick here too is not like in because I want to caution because you're gonna get people that buy this and be like, Sal, my number said this. What should I do? It's like you need to do the work, just like I would coach somebody with nutrition. You got to see what your numbers. You need are. to you're track. Trained. Yeah, you need to track for a while to find out what a high number and a low number that's is right. for you. Yep. What do you what do you I'm squeeze? You yeah. Up. What do you what is the peak? You like if you track and I like to see two weeks personally. Like I like to see two weeks of every single morning. Morning, it's the same time, same everything. You you squeeze this thing, right? And you find out over those two weeks, okay, where's my high and where's my low? And then that's your range. And so then going forward, when you go to squeeze this before you go to work out and you see where you land it, oh, wow, I'm on the peak. This is, like, I'm going to get after it today. Mm -hmm. Or, oh, wow, I'm towards the bottom. Or, oh, I'm in the middle. So, and you adjust your intensity based off like that. Absolutely. It's perfect. Uh, look, if you like Mind Pump's content, you got to head over to mindpumpfree.com. We got tons of guides and written information, books, uh, all free, mindpumpfree.com. You can also find all of us on Instagram. You can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin, me at Mind Pump Sal, and Adam at Mind Pump Adam. And that's a wrap -a -loo. Literally, this is no joke. I know there's a lot of books written on the obesity epidemic and how to solve it, and they're like, oh, all these complicated. Literally, this is it right here. If people just reduce their heavily processed food intake down to about 10% of their diet, so 10% of your diet or less, heavily processed food, that's it. Eat like you want to, enjoy your food,